large iced matcha green tea latte with oat milk. A venti, yeah, venti size, yeah. Anything else? That's all thanks. I couldn't be bothered doing my makeup, but I put on some lipstick and some mascara for you, so I hope my face is okay for you. We're going to the Queen Vic Market right now, so you should be excited because it's a very exciting place to be. Come on. Let's go. Um. Look how much chubbier they am. Since they fattened me up to eat me, I was very afraid actually. So I'm wearing my fans jumper, Alchemy, uh, and I'm wearing some fresh, um, yeah, fresh as fuck, honey like is. Um. Okay. Now what was I going to talk about? Oh yeah, um, I want to clarify two things. The first thing is, I want to clarify that I don't hate men. I don't hate men at all. I love humans. I really do. I love humans. I think we're all beautiful people. I think we are. Um, I don't really see people's faces. I don't even see people's faces. Yeah, all bodies. Um, I see people's spirits. Like when I look at someone, that's what I see. People's spirits. And uh, so, no, I don't hate men at all. Um, I don't think that you can generalize about anything like that. <laughs> I'm just noticing a lot of, I think that men can be very tricky. And I'm noticing, not like difficult, but like tricksters kind of thing. Um, and so I'm just, if I notice things like scams and stuff, like if you're scamming women out of nudes or you're scamming women out of money, then I'm gonna notice, you know, the tricks that you're using and I'm going to shed a light of awareness on those so that they don't work for you anymore. I'm not against anyone really. I'm not against, uh, is there any, I mean yeah I'm sure. The second thing that I want to clarify is in a previous video I said uh, if someone talks badly about his exes then he's just the type of person who talks badly about his exes and uh, so I want to clarify that uh, I I'm aware that some people are just bad people and like some people are just crazy bad people but what I'm trying to say is I've dated like one person who was crazy like a maniac a really bad person but everyone else I've dated was more or less reasonable do you know what I mean as in more or less reasonable person because 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 there aren't that many maniacs around you know, there just aren't that many maniacs around. Like if everyone you've ever dated is crazy, you might be the problem. This is Grant, he's my soul teacher. Hi.
Breathe in, take a moment to feel what the energy of this plant before you is radiating towards you. You're in control, Alana. Hi, I'm Alana. Welcome to my channel. Today I want to talk about spin classes because Grant is like, oh, he's my everything. He's my spin instructor. He's also my soul teacher. But when I went away for three months, I missed him like, I missed him as much as I miss my family. Because the point of spin classes is not weight loss. Like the point of fitness classes is not weight loss. The point of life is not weight loss. Do you get what I mean? The point of spin classes and of fitness classes is that we can do hard things. It's not meant to be easy, but like life is not easy, you know? And so I think Jordan Peterson talks about this. He says an obstacle voluntarily confronted is no longer an obstacle, it's a challenge. That's why I've been doing spin classes every day. Because after a while, like once you're fit, after a while, it doesn't really hurt anymore. It doesn't really feel like, it doesn't take as much effort is what I'm trying to say. So. Get yourself to a spin class, make sure the instructor is very gay, and ideally you should be terrified. Ideally you should be terrified for the entire class. That's how I like my spin classes. Terrifying, personally, because <laughs> it, it helps you to face your fears. Like I do spin classes because Grant makes me feel like I can do anything, and then I do anything. I just tell you have my attention, I'm falling. Falling asleep by the wheel I made you think it was real I gua shot my face off again You're in control, Anna. Also, braiding your hair The point of braiding your hair is not the braids itself Because the point of life is not having a skinny body You know, the point of life is not having cute braids Although it helps The point is to do something that's hard until it's no longer hard. Did you miss me this time? Did you miss me more than usual? Were you like hankering to see me? <laughs> Designed and engineered for cuddles. You are an angel in the shape of a pussy. Losing weight is not the point of life. Um, the point of spin classes is to realize that we can do hard things. I think that people think when they're getting in their own way, you think, oh, but I'm not the kind of, stop handsome, stop. What are you doing? Stop. Um, um, they think I'm not the kind of person who could do spin classes, you know? And that, it just, it's just that thinking because everyone, like practically everyone can do whatever they want. What I'm trying to say is like, you can be the kind of person who does whatever you want to do. Um, and uh, the other thing that I wanted to say was, uh, oh yeah, so I do spin classes because they are hard because because like i said in the previous video because the pain in life isn't optional so it's about like going towards it instead of trying to run away from it in a way that is uh in your control because that then empowers you further i also want to go over some more ways the boys will try to trick you for instance, uh, if a man online says that he needs nudes from you because he's going to paint you, don't send him nudes. Tell him to use his imagination. He doesn't need to see photos to paint you naked. And that's a scam. And what else? Oh yeah, the out of town game. If you match with a guy on Tinder who says he's only in town for a week, so it's now or never kind of thing, I promise you will not lose anything by not meeting up with this man. He is just trying to pressure you into sex sooner. He may not even be from out of town. He is just trying to pressure you into sex sooner. I miss you all the time. I do. Lots and lots. Do you miss me? I like move through my emotions in spin classes. Like I have cried through so many spin classes. Like I have cried through countless spin classes. And I still, it still am crying through spin classes because it's a way to like metabolize that energy of <coughs> um, grief and, and all of your emotions. Like you are such a more stable person if you 
do like mad amounts of exercise, like manic amounts of exercise, because you there you have like excess energy otherwise, you know? You're in control, Anna. Did you miss me lots and lots? Why are you staring yourself in the mirror? You've been staring yourself in the mirror for ages. You're a narcissist. Um. Did you know that the first cars on the road in the morning are armoured vans around 3 or 4 a.m. carrying either cash or prisoners? And I only know that because I see everything. I also wanted to speak on addiction. <sighs> it's obviously an issue that's close to my heart. I was on drugs for years. I was on hard drugs for like six years. And then eventually uh, Francis saved me. But I saved myself, but both. So the prominent psychologist um, in the world on addiction is his name is Dr. Gabor Mata. He also happens to be the hottest guy alive over the age of 70. And he speaks about how the opposite to addiction is not sobriety. The opposite to addiction is connection. Because that is what addiction, the cause of addiction is, you know, that existential dread. It's that, um, that feeling of like, I can't stand being in my own skin. That's the root cause of addiction and life, like I've said, life is not meant to be easy uh, and the internet is hell. Life is not easy, life is hard, the internet's hell, the internet is not a safe space uh, and uh, we're all basically living in the metaverse so I can understand why anyone would want to do hard drugs. Um, I did, like I said, I did for years. but. Uh, the opposite to addiction is not sobriety. The opposite to addiction is connection. And what does that mean? Well, to my understanding, that means that you just need one person, just one person to be on your side who you can feel like this person is going to love me no matter what. Like in any state, this person is going to love me and understand me and treat me with respect and understanding. But a lot of people are born into the most unfortunate circumstances. You know, you would not believe the things that happen to some people. And uh, it leaves a mark, you know, like trauma leaves a mark. And uh, drugs, what they do is they temporarily take away the pain. The best approach to addiction is not uh, banning things, not resisting things, because what we resist persists, you know? Um, it's more about adding the good, adding the positive, you know, like you're going to do heroin every day. Do you need to do heroin every day? And some people, yes, some people need to do heroin every day to stand being alive. To my understanding, the cure for that is just having other people be like, hey, I understand what that's like, you know, like I understand what it's like. <sighs> You know, like, I understand what it's like to need to do heroin every day to stand being alive. <sighs> Addicts are living in this kind of box, you know, we kind of put them in a box. You get this under underlying feeling of like, I need to justify my own existence all the time. 
when you're an addict. And it's that, it's that, justify, it's that need to justify your own existence, that thinking around um, I am not perfect just the way I am, you know, like I need to be fixed. And it is the thinking around I need to fix myself or I need to be something other than what I am. It's that kind of thinking that disrupts the connection that leads to true healing because connection is what leads to true healing. You can't have love without vulnerability. You can't have love without vulnerability. I know a lot of you are probably out there trying your hardest, but you can't have love without vulnerability. In a previous video, I mentioned that Pete Davidson has borderline personality disorder and how he's killing it across the board. And my point when I say that is, it doesn't matter like what differences or quirks or attributes you have that maybe you don't love as much. My point is that whatever your insecurities are, someone will love all of you. And what I'm trying to say is don't be so quick to change yourself when someone says, I don't like this or I don't like that. Don't be so quick to change yourself. I mean, so long as you're flowing in the direction of truth and love, somebody will love you for all of you. Somebody will embrace you for all of you. You know, I have this really good friend and he has borderline personality disorder and he dated this one girl. I can't, I mean, I can't remember her name but I won't say her name, but she was a beautiful, beautiful girl. And she loved my friend so much that she like, she would research borderline personality disorder and try and find out more about it and stuff. And you know, like that is love. That's love. Um.